Orsay Man is a textbook example of how evolutionists shoot themselves in the foot. In 1982, a skull fragment found in Spain was promoted as the oldest example of man in Eurasia. A three-day scientific symposium had been scheduled so that the experts could examine and discuss the bone. Scientists from Paris, however, threw a monkey wrench into those plans when they showed that Orsay Man was a skull fragment of a four-month-old donkey. The embarrassed Spanish officials sent out 500 letters canceling the symposium. With scientists making blunders like this, why should we take anything they say seriously? I had to investigate. On November 20th, 1975, General Francisco Franco, the 40-year ruler of the Spanish dictatorship, died from heart failure after a month-long coma brought on by several health problems, including Parkinson's disease. Thus began the historical period known as Transición Española, when Spain underwent the transition toward democracy. With this came new political parties, public demonstrations, a real vote, and a new territorial organization of communities known as autonomías or autonomous communities. This also brought about an easing of scientific oppressions, incrementally allowing more and more Spanish scientists to be published and celebrated for their contribution to human knowledge. It had already been established decades prior that humanity's origin lay in sub-Saharan Africa, so the quest was on amongst all European scientists to discover the first European. At the time, the oldest known hominid find in Europe was the Tauteville Man, found in 1969 near Tauteville, France, although by 1982, a team led by Massimo Cotorti discovered an abundant stone tool industry of choppers, flakes, and rich faunal remains dating to before 730,000 years in Acernia, La Pineta, Central Italy. In the summer of 1982, Josep Guibert, Jordi Augusti, and Salvador Moyasola organized an educational excavation summer camp in the Venta Micena site just outside of Orsay, Spain. The area had been previously studied extensively by scientists due to it being the remains of an ancient link formation and thus very likely to yield significant fossils. During the excavation, two students unearthed a piece of bone stuck to a rock that appeared to have come from some sort of hominid. The piece turned out to be a cranial fragment less than 10 centimeters. The bone was dated to between 0.9 and 1.6 million years, making it, if confirmed, the oldest known hominid in Europe. The team took the find to well-known neurosurgeon and paleopathologist Domenic Campillo Valero. Due to its curvature and thickness, he claimed there was no doubt, no possible mistake, that it was indeed human. Similar confirmations came from Pierre Mine, Raphael Adrover, and Peter Andrews. French research director Marie Antoinette de Lomley, who had discovered Tauteville Man with her husband Henry, also concluded that the Orsay bone was from a hominid, but reserved formal judgment until it could be cleaned. Local papers began publicizing the find and a press conference on June 11th 1983, wherein the discoverers presented the skull fragment publicly. The prevailing assumption that modern man entered Europe through the Levant in the Middle East meant that this migration occurred much earlier than previously thought. VM-0, or Orsay Man as the find became known, was not a new link in human ancestry, but a singular representative of either Homo erectus or Homo heidelbergensis, which had already been well known. All artistic renderings of Orsay Man were either of those species. What made this find interesting was the implication that humanity may have entered Europe via the Strait of Gibraltar. Otherwise, this find would have had no significance. For this reason, public officials in the Andalusian government felt it would bring some much-needed attention to their region of Spain. A press conference was then scheduled to take place in May of 1984 in Granada to present the Orsay skull to the scientific world, but in April of that year, the Catalan Museum of Archaeology had completed its cleaning. In this process, a small crest was discovered that seemed to indicate that the skull was of equine origin instead of hominid. The team took the bone back to the Delumleys in Marseille. Marie Antoinette compared the skull to thousands of animal skulls, determining that the closest match was to young equine specimens. Her conclusion was that it most likely came from an extinct genus of donkey that had died at about four months of age. Her husband, Henry Delumley, advised the trio to publicly announce that it was very likely from an extinct ass. The press conference in Granada was then postponed. By the time they returned to Spain, the headlines were already announcing the error. The satirical magazine El Papus publicly ridiculed the discovery. The entire Orse discovery was deeply rooted in politics. For those of us who live outside of Spain, the tattoo of the Orse man on the magazine cover probably means nothing. But Manuel Fraga was a right-wing Spanish politician who rose to power during the Franco regime. Then as now, the popular press jumped on any opportunity to vilify or ridicule political figures. 
The skull's identification became less clear, however, in 1985 when Joan Ponce Moya discovered a fossil finger in Cueva Victoria at a site nearby to where Orse Man had been discovered. Dated to between 1 and 1.5 million years, CV0 made the Orse identification less certain. In a 1995 conference in Orse, Yibet presented BL0, a supposed hominid tooth fragment found at Barranco Leon, also near Orse. At that same conference, he and Paul Palmquist presented the results of their fractal analysis analysis on the skull sutures. Sutures are the end product of the fusing of the different bones in the skull. Examining the shape and size of the sutures in the skull fragment, they could not have belonged to an equid. Its fractal dimension is consistent with the attribution of the fossil to an infant hominid. In another turn of events, Palmquist and Moyasola separately published two separate articles casting doubt on Yibert and Palmquist's fractal findings. This was overturned yet again that same year when a team led by Christopher Borja decided to split test the Orsay skull with those of known fossilized equine skulls found in the same vicinity for globular proteins known as albumins. When testing the horse skulls, very typical equine albumins were detected. When testing the Orsay skull, however, only hominin albumins were detected. So it seems that the Orsay skull may very well be an example of an early hominid in Europe. We may never know, however, because it has become insignificant next to subsequent discoveries. In 1999, two hominid humeruses were discovered at the same site in strata of the same age. In 2002, a hominid milk tooth was discovered at the nearby Barranco Leon site by Isidro Toro and Bienvenido Martinez Navarro. The tooth was dubbed Orse Boy. The identity of the Orse skull may never be conclusively proven. Whether or not it's the skull of a hominid or a donkey, however, between the discoveries of stone tools and other fossil finds of early hominids in the Andalusian region, we can be reasonably certain that there was some hominid activity in the south of Spain as early as 1.6 million years ago. Like Nebraska Man, Orse man was a conflation of the media. It was the product of a tumultuous political environment that saw non-scientist local officials vying for notoriety. On the other hand, the Orse man skull shows exactly why peer review exists. In the continuing scientific process, scientists constantly present new tests to confirm the authenticity of their finds. In the process, we have seen the Delumleys, Almquist, and Moyasola, who all accept evolution, refuse to allow flawed evidence to stand regardless of how important the discovery would have been to their own work. It is a credit to the standards that scientists keep each other to, despite their politics, and another example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.